videos, I had a lot of people asking how I painted this cute little dove. Well, I didn't paint it, we got it from a manufacturer, which caused me to think, how would I make that dove, you know, if I wanted to? So I decided to take these old roosters and figure it out. Ready? Go. Are you close up too? I rarely spray paint anything. I did happen to have these cans of chalked paint from Rust-Oleum and decided to use them just to make this easier. There's a lot of little crevices on these roosters and I do know the chalked paint does stick really well to glass. So I cleaned the roosters and then I sprayed them. I did two full coats across the entire rooster, all three of them. There's actually three in total. If you didn't want to spray them, you could use either DIY paint or you could use Dixie Bell. Uh, I probably would advise using a slick stick or some kind of primer to ensure that it sets but I didn't opt to go that way since I had two cans and actually I only ended up using not even one full can of paint to get two great coats on all three large roosters. After two full coats of the chalked spray paint, I did use two coats of polycrylic over that so I could more easily distress them later. I let them sit overnight to completely dry, make sure they were um, com completely 100% dry, and then I decided I would use my Prima chalk paste in Edwardian Gray and start creating some texture all over my roosters. The chalk paste is thicker than a chalk paint. It would be like if you left it out for a few hours and it got super thick. I love the chalk paste because it creates a lot of really beautiful chippy texture and it dries really nice. It's water soluble so it's easy cleanup and I started just kind of making some spots was my original thought. If you looked at the doves you'd see they had some dark areas. They used black. I was using this Edwardian gray um, and in the end I decided to really embrace this and I added actually quite a bit of texture. I didn't like the shiny um, the shiny flat surface, I guess, that the roosters had as being ceramic. I really wanted them to look more like concrete and have a lot of beautiful, chippy, chunky texture. And so I went to town and covered about probably 80% of the roosters with this chalk paste. I chose not to cover the entire roosters in the chalk paste because I did want to see some of the white color, light gray color that I had chosen coming through when we do the final distress at the end because I'll be using milk paint for that. Looking at the original dove, you could see there was a lot of texture to it and there was some chippiness where you could see layers underneath. So milk paint was the obvious choice. I have been using this mustard seed milk paint for years. It is really easy to use. I know it, a lot of people are intimidated because it comes in a powder form, but it's simply adding one scoop of milk paint to one scoop of water. So if you're using a tablespoon as I am, it's one tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of milk paint, and then you mix it together. I do find using hot water is a little bit easier. I mix it up and it seems really watery. I let it sit for about five minutes and all of the minerals in the milk paint get absorbed by the water and it becomes a lot thicker. And I actually did end up mixing a little bit more milk paint into this because I wanted it a little bit thicker. I do want it a little bit drippy and uh, again to create the texture on the roosters as I apply it. But ultimately I want it to chip and I do find that a little bit thicker consistency does help it chip. So as I'm painting the roosters with the milk paint, I have chosen Mora, which is sort of a gray with a little bit of a blue hue behind it. Um, it really looks gray in most settings, but you'll see in the final pictures, it looks a little blue. But my goal is to get into all of the little crevices and really make sure I've got a good thorough coating. I don't want to see any of the dark gray under it at this point. If a little bit shows through, that's okay, but really I want it to chip up and you to see the layers. If it's a little bit gloopy in some areas, it's a really technical term, uh, then that's okay too. I'll mostly smooth it out, but it, I do again find that if it's thicker it does tend to chip more so in areas that I kind of really wanted to chip I might allow it to be a little thicker than normal. Um, but I'm going to completely coat all three roosters and then I'm going to take a heat gun to it and sort of help the drying process along. 
while you do not need to use a heat gun to have milk paint become chippy, it's something that it naturally does. The heat gun does tend to help a little bit, and if you're like me, this is really your favorite part. Um, using that heat gun really helps it shrink up fast, and it also cr kind of creates the underneath where it gets hot and maybe doesn't stick quite as well to the surfaces. But you can see using the heat gun, you're, you sort of get that instant gratification of being able to see the cracks. It's really hard for me not to pick and chip as the cracks come along, but I'm going to let this um, kind of go on and run its course, but when you see up close, you can see all the amazing texture that chalk paste really built up on this, and you can see right now how it's kind of bubbling up a little bit. That's that heat that helps create some additional fun texture, and um, yeah, I did kind of burn that a little bit, but you see it just flex right off with your fingers, and um, it's going to do this all over the piece. I like to say that milk paint makes me feel like a kid on Christmas morning because when I come back to the piece, you just never know exactly how it's going to turn out. You don't know how it's going to chip. You don't know where it's going to chip. You don't know what the final product is going to look like. It cr has a very natural flow about it, and that really is the fun and enjoyment of using Miss Mustard Seed. When the piece is completely dry, I just use a light brush, like in this case I used a very small stencil brush, and I start picking off anything that's loose. And actually I did this over the entire piece, just sort of using that little stencil brush, knocking off anything that was loose. Really big pieces that kind of came loose, and some of those, I think based on the location, they were places where I didn't get the spray paint and the polycrylic maybe as good as I should have and it lifted all the way down to the ceramics so I'll show you how I fix that in just a minute. Otherwise I think you can see there's some really beautiful texture and chipping happening right here on these beautiful little roosters. Before I can move on to the next step I gotta finish and fix those problem areas. So I went to the store to grab Miss Mustard Seeds um, bonding agent and what I actually left with was Fusion Ultra Grip. So this clip is really wrong, so I'll kind of tell you what to do. Ultimately, you would want to use Miss Mustard Seed's um, bonding agent, and you would add one part of it to the one part of anything else you used. So if you used one teaspoon of powder, you would use one teaspoon of water, and then you would use one teaspoon of bonding agent. So it would be one, 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 instead of just one and one. Um, if you really wanted to make sure nothing chipped at all, then you could use um, the equivalent of one teaspoon of powder, one teaspoon of water, and two teaspoons of bonding agent. And that would ensure that it was basically more like a chalk paint or something that's going to have a huge bonding. It is not going to chip at all. Still beautiful colors and you could do that. Um, the Ultra Grip basically did work in its place. I think they're probably similar. Ultra Grip after all is still made by Homestead House which makes both Fusion and Miss Mustard Seed. So it did work and in some other places where I realized what was happening because it didn't have quite the same tech texture to it. I just added the Ultra Grip directly on the piece and then I used the Miss Mustard Seed over it. In any case, the fix worked. You can look at the roosters now and you cannot tell at all that they chipped all the way down to the ceramics. We are nearing the home stretch on these guys, so we're at the finishing part of it. So I'm giving it a, a nice heavy coat of clear wax all over it. Now you could use white wax and get those in the nooks and crannies. It would change it a little bit. You could just go over it with a dark wax or a black wax and that might work as well. However, understand that if you do not lay a base of clear coat, the whatever wax you put is going to absorb into the paint. And that is true whether you are using a chalk paint or whether you are using Miss Mustard Seed. So that first layer of wax is really important to control the next part of the steps. 
Now to create the last part of my vintage goodness, I am choosing to use DIY's Decrepit Dust. I absolutely love this stuff. I am so glad we are selling DIY so I can showcase what I do with this. Um, I am adding a little bit more wax. Actually, the wax is still a little bit um, damp, I'll say. So I'm adding wax into the crev decrepit dirt into the crevices, and then I'm using my wax brush to kind of brush it on. Now, if you're wondering why I chose decrepit dust rather than waxing the entire piece with say the uh, a brown wax or a black wax, the reason is because I don't want my whole rooster to be dusty brown. I want to keep that mora color all over my rooster and then I want the dust just sort of in those deep crevices as if it has been sitting for years and you've been trying to dust it. Think about the pieces that you pick up that when you're thrifting and where the dust settles. That's where I'm laying this decrepit dust. So I'm really working it into areas and this allows me to get some areas really dark and some areas really light without having to wax my entire rooster. Ultimately, almost all of this rooster gets done, but I have so much more artistic control using the decrepit dust than I do using a wax. And now it's just about time for the reveal. Let me know in the comments below how you think I did. Did I achieve the look of making this little dove into my roosters? What do you think about the chippy goodness? Have you ever used milk paint? Uh, I would love to know. And if you are interested in any of the products that we sell, be sure to check out vintagebedesign.com where we sell a lot of DIY products. And um, hopefully you'll hit the subscription because you enjoyed this and the little bell. So you'll get notified every time we do a playlist. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I'm staring at you, you don't even notice Should've told you straight away, you don't have to be afraid